each year, which points up the kind of competition they see every week with these cars running. And when you mix a handful of NASCAR Winston Cup drivers in there with the regulars on the Bush Tour, the fans know they're going to see a great show. I believe this is one of the best proving grounds in all of auto racing, the Bush Series, for a young driver who is trying to make his way in, maybe perhaps one day, NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Well, there are some inexperienced drivers and a lot of experienced drivers in tonight's field, but either way, they will get a stiff challenge from this very tight racetrack. How about it, Benny Parsons? Jerry, what a unique racetrack we have, have here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Most 5 8 mile ovals flat. The groove would be on the bottom of the racetrack, surely no higher than the middle of the way of the track, but not here at Indianapolis. Here's the groove. Follow me all the way up almost to the guardrail. As a matter of fact, in the middle of the corners, the cars will be hitting the guardrail before the night's over. Jerry, sparks are sure to fly. Hey, Benny, what is that you're wearing underneath your headset there where your hair used to be? What kind of hat is that? Jerry, you know, we don't do a hat of the week during a Bush Grand National Race, but Bob Daniels, our host this weekend, sent me this hat to use. I thought I would use it here. He served on the USS Salem in 1952. He's trying to organize a reunion with everyone that served on that cruiser over in the Mediterranean. So I thought I'd give him a plug. It's in September. So if you served on the USS Salem, get in touch with Bob Daniels at Indianapolis Raceway Park. You know, and every time I saw the big race, Indianapolis 500, in the month of May, it was raining. And every time I do a race with you, it's raining. I can't swim. I'm making buddies with all the sailors around the country, Jerry. <laughs> well, you can put away your rubber duck, Benny. It's not going to rain tonight. At least we hope it's not going to rain. We've got a lot of racing action to come your way here from Indianapolis Raceway Park. It's NASCAR Bush Grand National Series racing under the lights here at Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana, just a few miles from the famous Brickyard. Tonight's speed roll coverage of the NASCAR Kroger 200 brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil by Budweiser. Beachwood Aids for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Purelator, the world's largest filter company. We'll be back with a starting lineup and more pre-race activity from IRP after this. Excuse me. Are those vehicle boy jeans that you're wearing? Well, yes. Thank you. You may not have thought about getting a Sears Die Hard battery until you've had a little time alone to think about it. Die Hard. More power when you need it most. We welcome you back to Indianapolis Raceway Park for tonight's NASCAR Kroger 200 here in Claremont, Indiana. The race tonight, 200 laps, 137 miles. The track, 0.686 miles, that's five-eighths of a mile. And the purse, an impressive $109,208. A great field on hand tonight and a tremendous crowd tonight. But last night, they had a big crowd as well. Because of the popularity of the Kroger NASCAR 200 this year, Bob Daniels decided to make it a two-day show. Allow the drivers to come in a day early and sign autographs. Tommy Houston and other veteran drivers, including Davey Allison and some of the Winston Cup regulars, on hand for that session. And then last night, qualifying first round, and Rick Mass loops it out of turn two, trying to get his best lap in, but it was to no avail. They were all chasing this man, the car number 25, the crown, fast fair Oldsmobile, setting a track record at 110 miles an hour. They never getting set for more action, but Morgan Shepard puts the roller skates on and puts on quite a show. The three-time NASCAR Kroger winner here at IRP and Winston Cup competitor did his disco roller skating routine before a standing audience who were cheerful and applauding watching this young man perform. And then these men perform for the CarQuest Pit Crew Championships, the first time ever competition for Bush Series crew members. This is L.D. Ottinger's crew, led by Elvin Rector, changing two tires, adding fuel, and cleaning the windshield in 16.284 seconds. Looked to be the fastest time of the night. An efficient effort. Now, other teams weren't quite so lucky. Here, the car number 34, trying to change tires. Jack Sprague's crew. Now, watch the right front tire man trips and falls, and Sprague alertly jumps on the brakes, keeps running over his crew member, and then pulls away. But the best effort of the night, the veteran John Irvin led Nestle's crunch crew for Dale Jarrett. Changing two tires, Kenny can up the right front tire. Irvin will pull the jack and Jarrett will pull away in 15.901 seconds. And Irvin standing with the CarQuest people gets the $2,000 winning award. And Dale Jarrett's crew takes the accolades last night at IRP. 
And Dale Jarrett getting ready to climb aboard his Nestle's Pontiac, and he will have his work cut out for him tonight. He will start back in 23rd spot. Now, tires, always a concern for any short track event. And in NASCAR Busch Series racing over the years, they've had a tire rule that on the short tracks, you're not allowed to change tires at all under the yellow flag to try to limit cost, or else you get a two-lap penalty. But how about it tonight? Let's check in on pit road with Benny Parsons. Jerry, the rule is there's no rule. You can change as many tires as you want tonight. And folks, when the caution flag comes out the first time and these cars duck into pit road, you're going to see something very unusual. Some of the cars will go down this pit road, a normal pit road. Other cars will go around back of there about 30 feet away down and pit alongside those other cars. There's even three cars in a third lane. Kyle Petty, Larry Pearson, and the 28 car of Davey Allison making a third lane of pits. I'm going to have my work cut out for me, Jerry, trying to find all these cars. Well, thank you very much, Benny. It should be quite a night, and that pit action will be very exciting, and you'll be running up and down, covered it all here on ESPN. Well, let's take a look at our Sears diehard starting grid. The front row, the veteran Jimmy Hensley, and the rookie driver from Imperial, Pennsylvania, an impressive run for Davey Johnson. Back in row two, Elton Sawyer looking to pick up that win in Bush Series competition, and a man who was one here before, the veteran Tommy Houston. Back to row three, starting fifth. The man with a hot hand on the series. Five wins in the past three months. Chuck Bowd inside. And Jamie Obi, the driver who leads the Bush North Tour, will start sixth. Back in row four, Kenny Wallace, younger brother of reigning Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace and the veteran two-time series champion of the old late model sportsman ranks, L.D. Ottinger. Back in row five, Bobby Hamilton, a young man who ran so well last year as a rookie and a former series champion here, Tommy Ellis. And we'll take a look at the remaining starting field here in the Sears Die Hard starting again. We'll show you back through the field, 36 cars in all. We'll start here, Dave Mater along with Rick Mast in row six, Davey Allison and Dale Earnhardt in all Winston Cup row seven. Back in row eight, Ed Faree and Michael Waltrip, winner of this race a year ago. Back to row nine, Steve Grissom, who won last week, and Kyle Petty, a very strong effort yesterday in practice. Back to row 10, Morgan Shepard and rookie driver Jeff Burton. Back in row 11, Robert Presley, who won the qualifying event along with Bobby Labonte. Back to row 12. Dale Jarrett and Joe Nemechek, an impressive rookie on the series this year. Back to row 13, starting in 25th spot, Ernie Irvin and then Ed Barrier. Row 14, back in the field, Kenny Schrader and Dave Resendez, one of the northern drivers, making a trek down south. Row 15, Tom Peck and Jeff Spraker coming down from the open wheel competition. Row 16, Bobby Dodder and the five-time national champion, Jack Ingram. Back in row 17, Jack Sprague and the only lady driver in the field, Patty Moise. And in the final 18th row, Billy Standridge and the former two-time series champion, Larry Pearson. We'll be back with the star of the NASCAR Kroger 200 from Indianapolis Raceway Park after this message from our sponsor. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Nothing beats a winning team Pushing hard, reaching for the dream Nothing beats clean, crisp and cold Got the king of beers, you're on a roll Nothing beats a bun Budweiser Back in Indianapolis Raceway Park, the current Bush Series point standings, Chuck Bown, the man with a hot hand, has a point lead, 317 points, and Chuck Bown in the Nescafe Pontiac will start in third spot tonight, the 36-year-old driver, whose best finish here eighth a year ago, but what a difference a year makes for that driver. We'll be riding inside with the Car Quest Cage Cam, and that is the pole sitter's car, 44-year-old Jimmy Hensley from Ridgeway, Virginia, a former winner here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and what an effort Hensley had yesterday in qualifying a brand new one lap track record 110.26 
1.60 miles per hour. That's the record for the crown. Fast fare Oldsmobile, and he will lead the charge. 36 cars, 18 rows. The ninth annual visit for the NASCAR Kroger 200 to the 5 8 mile Indianapolis Raceway Park. Under the lights here, and we welcome you here to our Speed World coverage. Tremendous racing action on hand here. Brown on his feet at Indianapolis Raceway Park, getting ready for the green flag. The field out of turn four, led by the veteran Jimmy Hensley. Green flag waves, and Hensley pulls away for turn one. Tight racing corners out of turn one. Jamie Obie trying to make a move, but then Hensley has the lead. Hensley over the rookie driver, Davey Johnson, an impressive qualifying performance for that 26-year-old driver from Imperial, Pennsylvania. But they are battling two by two back in the pack. Hensley will lead the first lap. A move inside the car number 41 on the right of your screen. That is Jamie Obie, the Bush Grand National North Series point leader. It's the field now doubling up out of turn two. Single file down the back straightaway, trying to get racing room. A lot of veteran Winston Cup competitors back in the pack, and they're chasing these two guys. And Davey Johnson is not going to give up early, then. No, he isn't. He's running very strong here in the early part of the race. Jerry, no more experience than he has with these Bush Grand National drivers. Back in the pack, Dale Earnhardt starting way back in the 14th spot, trying to make his way up through the pack. He is now currently shown in the Goodrich Chevrolet in 10th spot, moving on the Rick Mass car, Mass in the left of your screen. That is the white blue room of car number 22, the Buick for the veteran series driver. That is Mass. He is in ninth. Earnhardt is in 10th, heading to turn one, single file. Not a number 99 car. That is Tommy Ellis, the former series champion, just behind Earnhardt. Jerry, this is a very tough racetrack to pass on, as Benny Parsons pointed out at the top of the show. They run right up next to the outside of the the wall in the middle of the turn and it's a little flatter down on the inside very hard to get traction down there but we do see some cars back in the pack that are running side by side but now the front runners are all running single power well the inclement weather today prevented these drivers like dale earnhardt from getting practice but earnhardt was up in michigan to run the irock race he was unable to be here this afternoon for any practice session so his car did not get a chance to get on the track today whatsoever he is trying to handle get this car dialed in early on and having trouble now moving in on Rick Mann. And there's trouble up in turn four. Davey Allison has spun his car out of turn four. One car sliding through there. That's the car number 17 of Larry Pearson driving the Superflow Chevrolet. The 08 car, Bobby Dodder involved. He's got some sheet metal left on the right front. And there's the five-time national champion, Jack Ingram, showing a lot of smoke from his car. Now, Pearson pulls away, gets the Superflow Chevrolet fired. These cars were trying to spin to look like to avoid the spinning car of Davey Allison. I'll tell you, when a car gets in trouble here, Jerry, there's not a lot of room to maneuver. There's lots of room, but to keep a car under control and move maneuver around other cars that are in trouble is tough to do. So you don't see many single car wrecks on this racetrack, especially early in the race. No one lost a lap up there. One car spinning the heaviest damage of all the cars coming towards you right now. That's Bobby Dodder, the son of the three-time Arca Series champion, Bob Dodder. And now Bobby Dodder, who runs the Bush Series on a regular basis in his car number 08. He started back in the 31st spot, 30 years of age, from Chicago, Illinois, having some sheet metal damage. He will wait to get the pit road open, and they will come around behind the pace car, and possibly he will duck on to get some of that sheet metal cut away. There's a look at Bobby Dodder, who uh, had a great effort in Bush Series racing a couple of years ago, and then was burned in a crash at Daytona and had to sit out for the, most of the year. It came back this year and has been running stronger and stronger week after week. We are early on here in the Kroger NASCAR 200. Caution for the first time today for the spinning car of Davey Allison up in turn four. Jimmy Hensley leads it. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. ESPN and Quaker State present Racing Tough, the new video that lets you answer the question, do you know what it takes to be a winner? Benny Parsons and Brett Bodine take you on auto racing's toughest road test, challenging your knowledge of what drivers, builders, and crews do to get the most from their cars. It's a fun way to become an auto racing expert. Order Racing Tough for only $19.95 by calling 1-800-472-1700. That's 1-800-472-1700. We'll send you the toughest road test you'll ever take. Racing Tough. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. Now for only $34.
Call toll-free 800-832-8700. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-832-8700 now. The Padres face the Astros on Sunday Night Baseball, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, is including the first caution of the day. Safety car makes the hard left-hand turn down pit road, and Jimmy Hensley, our pole sitter, picks up where he left off, taking the green flag and leading the charge in turn one. Tommy Houston in the car number six on the inside, trying to make a move inside Jamie Obie. That will take over the fourth spot. Obie, the car number 41. That's Elton Sawyer in the 27. And Houston, Macon hung out to drive on the bottom of the racetrack. It just might do it. Normally, you get hung out to drive when you're on the outside, Jerry, but down on the inside here is not the place to be. Houston having trouble getting traction. Now he gets back in line. Single file back to turn one. Tommy Houston having to fall back in line. There is Dale Earnhardt, the car number three. Now, Earnhardt had started that car back in the 14th spot. Is moving up in the 10th now. He's just behind the car number 22 of Rick Mast. Hensley has been able to get about a five-car length lead over David Johnson. David Johnson now getting closed in on by a couple of cars. That is the car number 27 of Elton Sawyer, the A.G. Dillard owned machine. About a four-car separation, they are single file. The car number 36, that is Kenny Wallace. Moving up, picking them off one by one. Jimmy Hensley pulling away, now opening up to about six car lengths. A.B. Johnson holding on, impressive run for this young driver. His best run of the year. There's the man they're chasing, 44-year-old Jimmy Hensley. Up the back straight away, single file. There is Dale Earnhardt, the intimidator. And behind him, a young man who is hard to intimidate, Tommy Ellis, one of the short track competitors from the South who has run so well in this series, the former series champion. Yeah, he's quite an intimidator himself. And right behind him was the Michael Walter car. So three strong cars running together as we're back up front now with Jimmy Hensley. That car handling beautifully, Jerry. In the early laps, Hensley, of course, Having it all go his way, there is Dale Earnhardt's car slipping up high. Tommy Ellis trying to move to the inside. A lot of experience. That's Earnhardt in the car number three. Tommy Ellis, the Goo Goo Clusters, Buick, and, of course, the Pontiac, the defending winner of this Kroger NASCAR 200, the car number 30, the Kool-Aid Pontiac of Michael Walter. Well, we've seen a bump a little bit there as Ellis trying to get by Earnhardt. Well, Michael Walter trying to get by Ellis. Some real tight running, but those are three very good race drivers have won on different types of tracks in Bush Grand National Competition. Here's Kenny Wallace making the move down on the inside, trying to pass L.D. Ottinger. Let's see if he can do it. That's tough to do this early in the race, and no, he could not make it work. Kenny Wallace trying to move down to the inside. That is, and he was running. And here comes Tommy Ellis on the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Now, he don't mind doing a little bit of rooting and shoving if he needs to. Earnhardt goes high, gives Ellis running room down on the inside. Let's see if he can hang on now as he goes into turn one. Tommy Ellis trying to keep the car pulled to the bottom of the racetrack. Earnhardt stays back in the throttle up high. The high groove is where the momentum is. Earnhardt now running door to door to Ellis, but Ellis will have the advantage in turn three. And no, oh, Earnhardt jumps back in the throttle, and Ellis says, my turn. Out of turn four, they are still door to door. Michael Walker don't know which one to follow, Jerry. He knows that the inside groove is tough to pass on, but he sees what Tommy Ellis is able to do down there on the inside, at least staying side by side with Earnhardt, so he just doesn't know which way to go. And they are moving in on Kenny Wallace and company just in front of them, but Ellis now trying to get the advantage. A very, very difficult racetrack. You heard Benny Parsons mention it is a one-group track, and if you make it a two-group track, you make it hung at the drive. Tommy Ellis is trying to get around, but he cannot pass Dale Earnhardt. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Jerry Potts, we're watching Jack Ingram crew working on the left rear axle. In the action up in turn four, someone hit the tire in the left rear, and they feel like they have a broken axle. They can't get the axle out to find out if it's broken or not. Spending a lot of time in the pit. Tough break for Jack Ingram, the five-time national champion, but Earnhardt now is on the move. He has moved underneath L.D. Ottinger, and Ottinger has slid back behind Earnhardt and Michael Walter, but now... Tommy Ellis.
Ellis trying to move to the inside of the veteran L.D. Ottinger. Ellis in the car number 99. Those are red cars, red and black, almost identical paint jobs with some reversal with the black and red. Ellis on the inside trying to move by the L.D. Ottinger car. Well, it looked like that inside groove is going to work for Ellis this time, but it didn't work for him, Jerry, when he was trying to pass Dale Earnhardt. In fact, he lost two or three positions. Michael Waltrip got by him, and Earnhardt, too, of course. There's Ottinger getting a little bit sideways in the car number two, while Dave Mater the third in car number 56 comes up on him. And there's Morgan Shepard in the yellow and white car trying to make a move. That's back in the 11th spot back there. That is the 11th that L.D. Ottinger, or actually Ottinger now back to 12th spot as he's been passed by Tommy Ellis. And Tommy Houston's car number six is slow on the inside. Well, let's take a lap around this racetrack and, and see how Jimmy Hensley maneuvers. Now he's come down the front straightaway across the start finish line, dips down a little bit going into turn one. And then you can see him go up next to the wall. You can see some cars have already hit that wall and then drifts out again going down the back stretch into turn three and you'll come down about the center of the racetrack let it drift out again and there's caution on the track got a crash on the front straightaway one car has tagged the wall that is the car number 69 that has come to rest at the far end of the front stretch a tough break for jeff spraker the latham new york driver in the spraker racing oldsmobile former open wheel modified competitor now gets the car fired but has a lot of sheet metal damage pushed in against the rear tires the car moving but we are under caution for the second time today now this is a tough break for Spraker, but it may be a break, Ned, for Tommy Houston, who just made an unscheduled pit stop. Could be. We had noticed that Houston had slowed down. In fact, you made mention of it, and he had just come into the pits, but when the caution came out, he came back out, and I think he stayed in the lead lap. We'll have to check that as we watch Spraker's car go around the racetrack, but Houston is at the tail end of the line, so yes, if he stayed in the lead lap, that certainly would be a break for him. And there is Tommy Houston in the Roses Buick, a competitive uh, Bush Series veteran Tommy Houston at 45 years of age has run so well this year, has four wins to his credit. And we will check momentarily with what happened to Tommy Houston. We are under caution for the second time today at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Jimmy Hensley leads the way. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. It's the same thing every Saturday. He puts on those old blue jeans and goes out with that old dog, and he's gone all day. He says he's going to bring back dinner, but all he ever brings back is that old dog. Here's to old dogs, Saturday mornings, and comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. If you love cars, you'll love Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring. Every week, Auto Week puts you inside the world's most exciting cars. GTs, sports sedans, collector cars, 4x4s, front drivers. Auto Week makes you an insider with industry news, personality profiles, old cars, columnists, the best classified anywhere. And nobody covers racing like Auto Week. You get the fastest coverage of Formula One, sports cars, stalkers, Indy cars. It's all in Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring every week. Call 1-800-354-6100 for this ESPN Race Weekend Special. And get Auto Week at our lowest price ever, just $17.95 for 52 issues. But do it now. This offer expires Monday, August 13th. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever. Call 1-800-354-6100. While we're on break, Tommy Houston and the Roses Buick made an unscheduled pit stop. I'm with Don Miller, the engine builder on the car. Don, what seems to be the problem? Right there on the transmission, John, is putting grease in on the clutch disc and causing it to slip. So the clutch is slipping? Yes, sir. Is he going to be able to run at top speed? or? Uh, no, I don't. right now we don't know how to fix that. Oh, one of the top, one of the top runners out, Jerry. Tough break for Tommy Houston, currently fourth in the point standings. Back to green flag racing, and Jimmy Hensley, who set the track record at over 110 miles an hour, pulls away. An impressive, just as impressive as Hensley's run, is running in second spot, young Davey Johnson, the, the rookie driver this year on the tour, for the first time running the full tour. And there we are inside, looking out of the back of Hensley's Oldsmobile in our car quest cage cam. And you get a good look at the front of the Buick, the Daily's Fruit Juices Buick of Davey Johnson. You can 
see the cars behind them are pretty well in single file. Running right up next to the wall, and there's a battle back in the pack, and that's Morgan Shepard creeping up there to the right of your picture, the car number nine, the Texas Pete Sausage Chevrolet. And we'll show you last year's winner. That's the Kool-Aid Pontiac of Michael Waltrip. Michael Waltrip having started way back in the field in the car number 30 and 16th spot. In the country time, Drake misses Pontiac. That's the Ronnie Silver prepared car. There he is on the left of your screen. Waltrip now trying to move inside. Elton Sawyer in the car number 27. Sawyer now trying to hold him off in the Buick, but Waltrip takes the spot. Hey, Waltrip is, is looking pretty strong here, Jerry. Of course, he knows how to get around this racetrack, as evidenced by his win last year. Making some very good moves and picking them off sort of when he comes to them. He, he has to work them. As we said earlier, you've got to work somebody to get them around them on this racetrack. But if you have a good handling race car, you can do it. And he's showing that you can. Well, he is currently in seventh spot. The Walter in the seventh position. Trying to move in on Kenny Wallace in sixth. Now, Kenny just in front of him for a second. Here's Kenny Wallace in the green and white car that Michael Walter is coming up on now. Waltrip running a very good line around this track. Rick Mast in the blue and white, car number 22 up in front of them. So good racing everywhere. You can see how close the cars are running, running in single file. Michael Waltrip now trying to size up Kenny Wallace in the car number 36 in front of him. But Wallace running very strong himself. Michael Waltrip running back in the seventh spot. That is Kenny Wallace, the green number 36 and sixth. And of course, Rick Mast in the fifth place. Mast is starting back in the field. A good run for Rick Mast. The Kool-Aid colors of Michael Walker. The car he won with last year. In fact, he destroyed in a spectacular crash on ESPN at Bristol, Tennessee, early in the year. So Ronnie Silver and the crew rebuild a car for the short tracks. And it is coming to bear tonight here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Michael Waltrip trying to move in on Kenny Wallace. Michael Waltrip, who won here a year ago, likes this racetrack. He thinks that possibly he's had some good breaks up here. And again tonight, he is having a good run at this 5 8 mile asphalt facility. Michael Waltrip thinks he's been pretty lucky this racetrack. How about it, Mike? You've had some good luck at IRP, haven't you? Uh, this deal has been real good for me. We, we started my, I started my Bush career right here in 1988 with my first ever Bush Grand National start. Two races later, I won my first Bush race at Dover and Darrell's car. We won here last year, and we've already won two this year. So uh, it's it's a nice deal for me to be able to, to be in a race car and be winning while I'm still trying to conquer the, the big big deal on Sunday. Michael Walter, who would like to make it two in a row up here, he became the only, the first driver in IRP history to win from Bush Series competition from the pole, although Jimmy Hensley might do it again tonight. We will take you back in the pack and pick up the three-time winner here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Morgan Shepard now driving the car number nine, the Mike Swain home Texas Pete Sausage Chevrolet. Now, Shepard has agreed to drive this car in 16 races thus far this year, Dan, and he has two pretty good finishes, fourth at Nazareth and fourth at New Hampshire. Yes, he has, has helped that team considerably, Jerry. They were having some handling problems with their cars, and there's no one in auto racing in my opinion, that knows more about the chassis of a race car than Morgan Shepard. So he brought a good bit to the table other than his tremendous driving ability in this series. On other short track events, Ward Burton, a rookie driver, and the older brother of Jeff Burton drives the car. But even though Morgan did not qualify that well back in 19th spot, he is running better and better, currently being shown in the 12th spot. There's Kyle Petty right behind him with a new color on the car number 42. And a new sponsor on it. That's the Splitfire Spark Plugs. Of course, they were sponsored by Ames. Of course, for, for legal reasons, the Ames Department Store people unable to continue their sponsorship. They are in Chapter 11. And Splitfire came on board with that Ted Condor owned team. And Kyle Petty has run very, very well. One of the better cars in practice earlier yesterday and today. He did not qualify that well, but is expected to be strong late in the race. The car seems to be handling very well. Many of these drivers just sort of checking out the competition they want to run hard so they won't lose a lap because they know Jimmy Hensley is out front running very hard and they want to get as far up front as they possibly can so when they make a pit stop they'll have a good track position.
Al Petty back in 14th. Right behind him is Steve Grissom in the car number 31. Then Dale Jarrett. And Jarrett now sliding a little bit as they're trying to move by the slowed car. Tommy Houston. Houston, of course, having made the unscheduled pit stop. You heard that report from the pits a little bit ago with Benny Parsons and Don Miller. And there is Dale Jarrett, whose crew won that first annual CarQuest pit crew competition last night. A little over 15 seconds, and Jarrett now running back in the pack. He is in 17th position now, Jerry. He started in 23rd position. Dale Jarrett slowly but surely picking him off, and a pretty good pack to be in. That's Kyle Petty in the car number 41, Steve Grissom in the 31, and Grissom coming off his first ever Bush Series win a week ago at Pulaski, Virginia, up in Dublin, Virginia. Pulaski Speedway, we should say. And he's trying to move the inside of Kyle Petty. That's for the 14th spot. Jimmy Hensley showing the way back up front, and Hensley is literally pulling away in the crowd past Fair Oldsmobile. A tremendous day for the 44-year-old Ridgeway, Virginia driver. Jimmy Hensley becoming the second driver to lead them all. We'd like to do it here. Stay tuned. We'll be back. I said, put on some stakes and get the queen a Bud Light. Oh. Bud Light's clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never lets you down. Henry, they're pop tops. Everything else oh. is just a light. full of simple pleasures, like the comfort of Levi's jeans, or had you forgotten? Phil and Laura Gordon married one child. Frosted Flakes, Dad? No, oh, that's a kid's cereal, honey. Yeah. How about some all brand? Publicly, they claim Kellogg's Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal, but these films tell a different story. Experts believe they loved those sweet, crunchy flakes as kids and just never got over them. I forgot my lunch. Mm. What's going on? Nothing. Here, we're fine. It's all right. It's okay. Oh it's okay. Why hide it? Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Seven cars battling it on a very, very tight racetrack on a Saturday night at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and they are really putting on the show here before a capacity crowd. Dale Jarrett in the Nestle's Crunch Pontiac trying to move inside. L.D. Ottinger, Ottinger in the car number two. That is Ernie Irvin in the black and orange normal car number 75. Jarrett's car got a little bit loose, Ned, and he got past. Yeah, he, he was down on the inside. He had made a number of passes on the outside, Jerry, but he got down on the inside, and that's a tough way to try to get around this racetrack, and he got loose and lost the position. Boy, that is some kind of racing going on between all of these drivers. That's Bobby Hamilton in car number eight on the outside, Joe Nemechek in car number 87 pulling up on Kyle Petty. And here, Jerry, once again, he's going to try that inside on L.D. Ottinger. It didn't work for him earlier. Let's see if it'll work this time. Yep, I believe he's going to make it work this time. Jarrett trying to move to the inside of the Detroit Gasket Oldsmobile of Ottinger, and he will take the spot away. And Jarrett had to run the qualifying race. Now Robert Presley in the car number 59. Presley in the Alliance Training Center machine, who won the qualifier to get into tonight's field. Cannot quite get by the Ottinger machine. Here comes Kyle Pitt to the outside. The car number 42, the split fire spark plug Pontiac. Boy, I tell you, when an opening comes on the outside, they jump in there, Jerry. Sometimes it looks like there isn't room for a race car out there between another car and the wall, but they jump out there just as quickly as they possibly can because it still is the best way around this racetrack. There's Dale Jarrett in the car number 32. Had some impressive runs early in the year. They are still single file. That is Presley now as Nemechek has gone by him. Let's go back inside the crown racing machine here. The Oldsmobile of Jimmy Hensley coming up on lap traffic in our CarQuest cage camp. Let's see if Hensley can get by. See if he'll make it two abreast trying to get by the car number 69 of Jeff Spraker. Well, he has been able to run out front most of the time, Jerry, and build a big lead, but now he's uh, having to work traffic. And here is Bobby Hamilton, an unscheduled pit stop for him. He was one of the drivers we saw just a moment ago in that seven-car battle. 
Skip McCord and the crew. That's Bobby Hamilton, a former track champion at the Nashville Fairgrounds Raceway. An impressive young driver who was tabbed last year to drive, remember, one of the movie cars at Phoenix for Hendrick and qualified the car in the top ten. So an impressive driver having his trouble tonight. One driver who's having to go all his way is Jimmy Hensley. Pole sitting record time at over 110 miles an hour, and he is literally picking them off one by one now back in the field. Big battle back here. Elton Sawyer in the car number 27. Then comes Steve Grissom, the 31. Dave Mater, the third. Now, he is driving the car that's formerly driven by Ronald Cooper. It's owned by the Cooper family, the car number 56. Dave Mater, the third, a four-time NASCAR All-American Challenge Series champion. And he is now in the Bush Series competition. Just, just getting started a few weeks ago and doing pretty well, Ned. Yes, he's doing a great job. No question about it. There's Morgan Shepard trying to go by him on the outside. Now you can see Dale Jarrett has caught up the background. He just got one, out of one big pack of cars and comes up on another one. Great racing back in the pack. That is back for the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th place runs. That is the Dave Mater car number 56 back there. The 75 is Ernie Urban and Dale Jarrett moving down to the inside. He's going to follow a fellow. Whoa! Ooh. Urban cuts down to Jarrett and jams on the brakes. Boy, he was lucky to get out of that. That was a, a real tight situation. There's Tommy Ellis now trying to come back on the inside of Jarrett after Jarrett slid there for a little bit. Ernie Irvin able now to get around Elton Sawyer in the car number 27. Jarrett now back in single file. Now Jarrett gets a run at Sawyer coming out of turn two. We'll try to make it too wide as he just gets a nose underneath him going to three. Looks like Sawyer's car is a little bit loose, Jerry. He started up th in third position, but has drifted back through the field as Jerry does make the pass. And Tommy Ellis, of course, who started in the 10th position, has drifted back as well. Dale Jarrett currently being shown in 13th spot, and that 14th is Elton Sawyer. Tommy Ellis trying to take the 14th spot away. Back on the inside, Ellis is the guard number 99. 1988 Bush Series national champion. Ellis caught on the inside, and he gets passed by L.D. Ottinger. Well, there again, he got caught down on that inside. Here's Kyle Petty trying to come by up on the outside. And look at Kyle. It just doesn't look like there's room for a race car on the outside, but he goes out there. Ellis gives him the running room. Here's Mimacek coming by Ellis on the outside. There's Robert Pes Presley, car number 59. He'll try to make the pass as well. Great racing. What, about 10 cars in that pack? Now, this is racing back for 16th, 17th, and 18th spot. I mean, a tremendous feeling. Now you know why people come out and stand in line and buy these tickets and buy them early. A sellout here at Indianapolis Raceway Park for the last few years for Bush Grand National Series racing at its finest. They put on one well of a show here. Let's check in in the pitch with Benny Parsons on the Bobby Hamilton story. Benny. Jerry. I don't know what's wrong with the car, and neither does Bobby Hamilton. They've looked all around. They looked under the car. They've looked inside the engine, and now there's a man inside the car trying to figure out why the car won't run. As soon as they stop working on it, I'll try to find out myself. Bobby Hamilton is sitting in the car, leaning on his left arm with a helmet there, trying to say, I wish I could be out there, guys, and what a disappointment for the driver from Nashville, Tennessee. They are still going at it back in the pack there. The leader, Jimmy Hensley, making it look easy. Hensley, a former winner here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Back years ago, Hensley won in 1985. The only race run without a caution flag. And he is showing the way here at IRP as we have plenty of action to come your way. Stay tuned. If you love cars, you'll love Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring. Every week, Auto Week puts you inside the world's most exciting cars. GTs, sports sedans, collector cars, 4x4s, front drivers. Auto Week makes you an insider with industry news, personality profiles, old cars, columnists, the best classified anywhere. And nobody covers racing like Auto Week. You get the fastest coverage of Formula One, sports cars, stalkers. Indy cars. It's all in Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring every week. 
Call 1-800-354-6100 for this ESPN Race Weekend Special. And get Auto Week at our lowest price ever, just $17.95 for 52 issues. But do it now. This offer expires Monday, August 13th. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever. Call 1-800-354-6100. Live NASCAR excitement. Defending champion Rusty Wallace is hot on the road courses, and Watkins Glen always delivers wild finishes. The Budweiser at the Glen, Sunday afternoon, live on ESPN. Back in Indianapolis Raceway Park, Jimmy Hensley showing the way. He won here in 1985, but he is having a great night again, having set on the pole, but this battle is right in front of the leader. This group of seven or eight cars back and forth, inside and outside, and Robert Presley just slides up in front of Elton Sawyer. Now, L.D. Ottinger in the car number two will try to go beneath Sawyer. These drivers, Ned, have seen the leader coming. Yes, they have. They've been told by their pit crew, hey, the leader's coming up. You don't want to go a lap down, so you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to be scrambling to stay out in front. Now, here comes Hensley. You can see him. He's the blue and white car right at the back of that pack. As Tommy Ellis comes into the pits, he just went a lap down. But here's Hensley. That's a tough crew to to lap. He just went around Kenny Schrader and look at that pack in front of him that he has to go around. Our car quest cage cam. He is fighting to turn that wheel. He's got to be very careful. The Penrose car in and front of him. is out. And There's we have a yellow flag. Debris on the racetrack, as you said, Ned. And Jimmy Hensley was just trying to get around Kenny Schrader. Well, he had already passed Schrader, but Schrader beat him back to the start finish line and got back in the lead lap. Caution for the third time tonight. Debris on the racetrack, and Jimmy Hensley has got to be smiling inside that fast fare Oldsmobile, the Bobby King prepared car. We have run about a third of this race now, Jerry. It'll be interesting to see if anyone comes into the pits. The pit is closed right now until the pace car gets out and picks up Jimmy Hensley. Now remember, it's a 200 lap race, Ned, and according, these are V6 engines, 274 cubic inch engines with the 390 carburetors. Now many of the crew chiefs are figuring they could go about 150 laps on fuel. We are at 66 laps right now. What will they do? Well, I don't know. I, I guess it depends on how their car is handling and as far as the tires are concerned. That might the decision as far as whether they come into the pits or not, depending on how their tires are doing. Jimmy Hensley showing the way here in the Fast Fair Oldsmobile in the early laps here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Caution for the third time today. We'll be back with pit stops and more action after this. What could this off-road vehicle possibly have in common with this off-road vehicle. The same quality filter protection you can give your car. From Purolator, the world's largest filter company. Oh, the itch of athlete's foot. Desinex stops the itch and burn of athlete's foot fast, and your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. So the next time your athlete's foot begins to itch, stop it fast with Desinex. The Quaker State King Racing Buick, winner of the 1989 Die Hard Award for the most tough NASCAR mile, is winning again in 1990, as Brett Bodine takes first in the first Union 400. It takes a tough oil to keep a car running this tough. And it takes a tough driver to step right in, step on it, and win. But number 26 is one tough car. Brett Bodine is one tough driver. And Quaker State is one tough motor oil. Back in Indianapolis Raceway Park under caution for the third time tonight for debris on the racetrack, and they will make the entry on the pit road. Ned Jarrett, here comes our leader, Jimmy Hensley, down the pits. Remember, double wide in the pits there. They were pit on the front and back side of that piece of guardrail. Yeah, and those pitting on the back side, they can make their pit stops maybe as quick back there as we see the split screen, but they won't be able to get out of the 
much out onto the track quite as quick because they got an extra turn to make when they get down to the end of pit road. Of course, we're watching the Davy Johnson on the bottom of the screen, and Jimmy Hensley already has the service on his fast spare Oldsmobile, and he heads back out in, onto the track. Remember, no tire rule tonight. You get as many tires as you need to, and that is Earnhardt's crew, Tony Urey and the crew. And that was unpredictable, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> I tell you, they do a great job. The, the fact that Earnhardt was pitting on the second tier of the pits behind there, that was remarkable pit stop. Tremendous effort in the pits there. Jamie Obi, the car number 41, being shown as our leader. Obi, a former two-time winner of the Oxford 250, the richest non-Winston Cup short track race in America. And there's a view of Jamie Obi, our current Bush Grand National North Point leader. He is the leader right now here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. While we're under caution here, let's uh, take a look at some of the unique things that happen on pit road behind pit wall with some of the lap charts. Here's Benny Parsons. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Scoring in the pits, that's no problem, right? The car goes by. Sharon puts a big check on the pad. When you fill up two sheets, that's 200 laps. The race is over. It's a little bit more involved than that. This is Sharon Mast, the wife of driver Rick Mast, driver of the Raven Boats Buick. When Rick goes by, she hits a starch walk. Boom. That's the one on the left. She marks the time down. When the leader is going by, if it isn't Rick, boom, she hits a stopwatch and records the leader or the next fastest car on the racetrack's time. When they take these two sheets home afterwards, they look at everything at the time they ran, at the time that the leader or the fastest car ran, and they can figure out just how bad they were getting beat. Invaluable for next year when they come back for the Kroger 200. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing after the caution flag and all the pit stops. The field is shuffled up here on lap 74. And Chuck Bound in the car number 63 being shown as the leader, but they're moving by. Yes, they are. And here comes the Car number 22 of Rick Mask taking over the lead, and Michael Walter putting a little bumper to Chuck Bowen there. Tommy Ellis is out in front of Rick Mask, who is now leading the race, Jerry, and that puts him back in the lead lap. He would like to see another caution pretty quickly here so that he can get back in condition. He got lapped just before the caution came out. Rick Mast, we saw earlier, he had trouble qualifying last night. He spun the car off a of turn two, just get a, trying to get a qualifying lap in. And here he is leading the field tonight. Being chased there by Chuck Bound, the car number 63, the man with the hot hand, five wins in 1990. Here's Bobby Labonte in the car number 44, the Penrose Oldsmobile, and his car is a little beaten and banged up here. He has had some trouble and has had an unscheduled stop. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. This is Bob Labonte, Bobby's dad. You made several unscheduled stops. What's the problem? Well, when a guy's got the gas in front of him, he had to go hide. What? Bobby said something on the radio. Well, when Jack Sprague spun out, of course, everybody went high. Somebody hit us, and we hit the wall with the right front. Bet the camper. Camper's all screwed up. So. Got more squirrels here than the Indy Zoo. <laughs> Body, pretty graphic there, and here's Davey Allison pulling back out of his Chevrolet, the car number 28. That's the Hummingbird sponsored car, had an unscheduled stop, and there's Jimmy Hensley, who was our early leader, and of course he was back in the pack now after at that pit stop for fuel and tires. That would be the only pit stop he would need to make, really, for fuel, Ned. Yes, he should not have to stop as far as fuel is concerned, but new tires run faster on this racetrack, Jerry, than do tires that are worn and heated up. So it would be interesting to see if they... And he's slowing down as Dale, Jerry, and Steve Grissom goes by. Here goes Dave Mater by. So the pole setter, the man who had dominated the early part of this race, slowing down, Jimmy Hensley. Well, he had been back up in the top 10, and now he is back in 13th spot. He was actually up moving on Steve Grissom for the 10th spot, and he has slowed, but now his car now getting back up to speed. Apparently, he had got the car in the bottom of the racetrack. We are inside Hensley again, showing him having trouble with the handling, but back up front. We'll see if Rick Mass can hang on and pick up his seventh career Bush Grand National Series win. It's been almost a year, and he's leading them right now at IRP. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this from our sponsors. You may not have thought about getting a Sears Die Hard battery. 
until you've had a little time alone to think about it. Die Hard. More power when you need it most. From Hollywood Pictures, Spencer Barnes has the perfect life. Spencer Barnes has the perfect house. He's got a great car and a wonderful job. There's just one problem. That's not Spencer. I, Spencer Barnes. Freeze! Meet Jimmy Dvorsky, a professional thief who's stolen Spencer's identity. Spencer Barnes? Yeah, it's me. He's moved into Spencer's house. I'm on Dynasty. Taken over his job. Are the Cubs winning the World Series and loose women. He dated his girl. Want to join me? Yeah! and ruined his life. This is a disaster. <laughs> Charles Grodin is Spencer Barnes. Spencer. Spencer. James Belushi is Spencer Barnes. Spencer! Did I slept with Walter's daughter? Yeah. Oh, how was that? In the movie where one man's business great. is another man's pleasure. I knew I could be right in bed. <laughs> Taking care of business, rated R. National sneak preview tomorrow night. Extra strength Rolades, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. Jerry Punch, Jimmy Hensley, our pole sitter, was running so well, he slowed dramatically. I talked to Bobby King, the crew chief on the Crown Oldsmobile. He said they felt like they had a tire going flat, but it doesn't look that way. He's able to stay out there, running at the same pace. Maybe the car, the chassis, just going away. We'll have to wait and see. Well, Benny, he had led the first 67 lap after sitting on the pole with a new track record, and you're now riding inside the car with Jimmy Hensley. A little bit ago, Ned picked it up right away. He was trying to move for, for ninth spot, and the car suddenly slowed. Yes, he did, and Jerry, it might be that they only put on, when they made their pit stop, they only put on right side tires, and uh, the left side tires play a very important role here at IRP, and I expect his left side tires were not holding very well. The car was slipping a little bit in the turns, and he thought he had a flat, but once he got adjusted to the car, well, then he, they will run pretty good. Just a couple of laps away from the halfway point, it'll be 98 complete this time by 33-year-old Rick Mass from Rock Ridge, Bass, Virginia, an impressive Bush Series driver who has run very well in the Winston Cup. And who could forget that impressive run last February, a year ago at Daytona, when he was driving for Travis Carter and led the Daytona 500, having a great run down there. Mass holding off, Chuck found the front two cars. Now, back in the pack, a battle. Car number 79 running in sixth spot. That is Dave Resendez holding off Ed Barrier. Good run for Barrier there in the Pharaoh's Oldsmobile. It wasn't long ago that Barrier passed Dale Earnhardt, so they pulled away from him a little bit. A lot of people have been impressed with Dave Resendez's run this year. Of course, the veteran crew chief, Daryl Bryant, is the wrench on that car, and Resendez came within a hair of winning up at Nazareth, Pennsylvania, earlier in the year, was just passed late in the race by Jimmy Hensley. So a good run for Dave Resendez, currently being shown in the seventh spot. And there is Dave Resendez. Good-looking young man, and Ed Barrier, who has not had a steady ride for the past few years in Bush Racing, but has had a tremendous amount of talent. And a big battle right behind these cars. They are jamming it up, beating and banging. That is Tail Charrot and Dale Earnhardt. A pair of Dales rubbing and racing that in turn one. Earnhardt trying to hang on. Charrot moves beneath him, takes the spot, and that's Ernie Irvin. Looks like a Winston Cup show. Charrot, Earnhardt, and Irvin. Now Irvin gets up and rubs his buddy from nearby Kannapolis, because that's where Irvin lives, just outside of Concord. No Excuse me, a little contact there between Kenny Schrader, I mean Kenny Wallace in the, the green car, and Ernie Irvin. Here's Kyle Petty trying to get in there and mix it up. That, that looks like fun. I want to get up there and play a little bit too, but Kenny Wallace has a little bit to say about Kyle making a move. Earnhardt on the left of your screen, then comes Ernie Irvin, and we'll watch him again as they will taper down in turn three. Back up front, that is Rick Mast in the car number 22. Moving in on the car number 41 of Jamie Obi. Obi had been shown as a leader after one of the caution flags early on. Now he pitted and came back out, and the car just not running up to steam. No, it's not running like it was earlier in the race. Now here's a fellow.
is having a tough night. That's Ken Frater in car number 52, and just behind him is Davey Allison, two of the top NASCAR Winston Cup drivers. But tonight is not a very good night for them. Allison is at least one lap down. Ken Frater did get back in the lead lap after having gotten lap, but he beat Jimmy Hendrick, who was leading the race at the time, back to the line. But Frater's car just not performing up to par here for him. Kenny Schrader, best 1990 finish, third at Darlington, South Carolina. Of course, the former USAC champion, and there's Davey Allison running his own Chevrolet. Had to abandon the Ford after they couldn't quite get the parts to put the motors together, the V6 motor, so they went back to the Chevrolet with the Buick engine, and they are running not that well here at IRP tonight, but they are out there having some fun. And here is Larry Pearson in the car number 17. He is subbing for Darrell Waltrip, and they have had their troubles in the Superflow Chevrolet, Dan. Yes, they have. He has made a couple of unscheduled pit stops, green flag pit stops, Jerry, as Rick Mast about to put another lap on him. This is the first Bush race, I believe, that Larry Pearson has run this year. But uh, the car just not seem to be working too well for him. Now we're back inside of Jimmy Hensley's car. He's back in the pack, but running pretty well now. Jimmy Hensley, who thought he had a tire going down a little bit ago, and then that's him back in the pack. And Hensley now being shown in the 16th spot. Just going to show you, no matter how quick that car was early on, it is a tough track to pass on. Yes, it is. But he had dropped back quite a bit behind. That's Kenny Wallace right in front of him. And he had dropped back about a quarter of a lap behind him. So he has run him down, Jerry. So apparently the crowd as mobile is picking back up. Jimmy Hensley back in that pack, and they are trying to mix it up. Hensley dives to the inside toward turn one. He will try to get a move inside of Kenny Wallace. Wallace to car number 36, the green car. Hensley trying to get beneath him. That's Earnhardt in front. And just how many cars can get in one spot at a turn two? Well, I'll tell you, they couldn't go three wide, although they tried it for just a moment. But here's Hensley, very determined to make that move down on the inside, but it's not going to work for him. In fact, he'll lose a position as Nemechek goes by on the outside. They, they are, have passed some other cars. Earnhardt now being shown in the 11th spot. Hensley was 12th, and of course, those guys battling just to get in the top 10. Back up front, here's the guy they're chasing. Car number 22, the Raven Boats Buick, the Glenn Doyle-sponsored car for Rick Mast. Looking for career win number seven in Bush Series competition. It's been a year since Rick Mast has won a race. A couple of young drivers, and of course, the car number 31. Steve Grissom, who won a week ago in Pulaski, we said, and that is Robert Presley, picked up his first ever win a year ago last August. In fact, it was a year ago at Orange County Speedway. Now they're battling for the fifth and sixth position. Presley running in fifth place, Steve Grissom running sixth, and they're not too far behind the leaders. Robert Presley, this past Monday, hired Ricky Pearson, of course, the older brother, younger brother of Larry Pearson, as his crew chief. Ricky Pearson, the veteran crew chief that took his brother Larry to two series championships in the Bush competition, and he's got his hands full, but he holds Grissom off. So now Robert Presley not only has the veteran Ricky Pearson as his crew chief, but only four days on the job, he's got Owen Edwards, who was the crew chief for two of Jack Ingram's national titles in the series. So Presley will definitely be heard from in the future. Yeah, that's a pretty impressive lineup of people in the garage. And they are reeling in this bunch right here. They are trying to reel in the leaders, and that's Tommy Ellis now, who had picked up one of his laps, but is still showing a lap down to the leader, and he is trying to keep from going another lap down, as now Rick Mast has run him down. Now you have the first four cars there. Tommy Ellis is, is not uh, the leader. Rick Mast is the leader. In second place, at Chuck Bowne. Third place there, the car number 30, of Michael Walter. And right behind him is Morgan Shepard in car number nine, running fourth. And fifth and sixth are right behind him. That's the OB car at 41. He's a lap car, but fifth and sixth. That is Presley and Grissom. And those cars are running down the lead for some. It is heating up here just past the halfway point at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Bush Grand National Series racing action at its finest. Stay tuned. A lot of laps to come your way. We'll be back after this. You don't have to worry when rain keeps pouring down. Cause you're home to take it. Comes around. Introducing Olympic Water Guard, the water sealant that protects brick, concrete, and wood by repelling water and blocking out the sun. It's no wonder, it's no wonder, we'll stop the rain. Olympic stops the rain.
life's full of simple pleasures. Like the comfort of Levi's jeans. Or had you forgotten? What could a sleek jaguar have in common with a fat cat that a dashing deer has in common with a nimble ram and a big bad bulldog has in common with a cute little rabbit. The same quality filter protection you can give whatever animal it is you drive from Purilator, the world's largest filter company. Raceway Park. Nice, clean action here. We've had four caution flags tonight, but they have been racing now for about 50 laps, and Rick Mass is really showing a lot of muscle in his Buick, the Raven Boats Buick. One driver has had his troubles. He almost got in the top ten, but now is struggling a little bit. That's the car number three, the Goodwrench Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt. And let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Jerry Punch out down with Tony Uri, the crew chief. Tony has failed said, what's wrong with the car? We've got blistered tires here. Jerry, back to you. Well, a lot of people in the pit, some of the Bush Series crew chiefs predicted that left side tires would be more critical than right side because of the flat racetrack net. Well, yes, there is. And the caution is on the track, on Speedway. Caution is out. Leader has been tagged down in turn one. Tough break for Rick Mast. He has come into heavy contact down there with the car number 59. That is the Jeff Spraker machine. Jeff Spraker involved in a caution early on, and we'll watch. Now, that is Rick Mast, and he has got to be pounding the steering wheel as he gets involved trying to get by a slower car. Rick Mast, misfortune continues. There's the Spraker car. His Oldsmobile having come to rest against the wall in turn one. Now, he had, had problems earlier, was involved in a spin. Let's take a look, man, what happened. Okay, Rick Mast trying to put a lap on Spraker as they go down into turn one. Now, he's going to go to the outside and Spraker loses the car. I don't believe Mast hit him, but he spins right in front of Rick Mast. Nowhere to go. He spins right up into the groove, and both of them hit the wall, and the sparks fly. Boy, if Rick Mast didn't have bad luck, he wouldn't have any at all. What a tough break for Rick Mast. I mean, absolutely. Spraker had an ill-handling car and had already tagged the wall once. And the youngster who is trying to get his, it's only his first season running in the Bush Series, coming from the modified ranks down from New York. And, and he is a very likable young man. He lost his father last year. His father who was his inspiration in racing. And his dad had told him, if I'm not here, son, go south and make it on the pavement in NASCAR. That's what he was trying to do. And a tough break for Spraker and a tougher break, really, for our leader, Rick Mast, who has some damage in the front of his Buick. Yes, I'm sure that he'll be able to continue, Jerry, but maybe not at the pace that he has been running. Mass now, the pits have not been opened, so he cannot get on the pit road. A lot of sheet metal damage. The crew now will be trying to work. A couple of years ago, he was running so well at Daytona, and, and there he is, a likable driver, one of the people who is the most, one of the most best-liked drivers, I should say, in the pits of all the Bush Series competitors. And in fact, a, a lot of rumors about him having a Winston Cup ride for 1991. The pits are open, and it's look, feeding time at the zoo, Ned. They're all on pit road. Yes, everybody coming in, and I'm sure that most of them are going to be putting left side tires on those cars. Now, we see Chuck Bowen. They're changing the right side tires. Probably will be changing left side tires as well. They'll probably go ahead and make four tires, a four-tire change while they're in this town. And again, to the right of your screen, there is a pit road on the back part of the pits. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. We can see the heavy damage to the front of the Rick Mast Raven Boats Buick. And I was watching Jess break when he went in the corner. Jerry, it looked like he cut a tire or something. They're having all kinds of problems getting the nose off. There's some wire from some brake duct. They have to get some something to try to cut that. Otherwise, he's going to drag this nose all the way around the racetrack. Also trying to get the fender off the right front. Meanwhile, the pace car is coming off turn four. If they don't hurt, they're going to be left. Still working on the right front. Here comes the pace car. Still working on it. And they are going to go a lap down. What a tough night for Rick Mastery. 
Well, his misfortune here at IRP continues. The crew there, Man Apperson and Timmy Jones, the rest of the Raven Boats crew, trying to work, but it's no use sending back out, Dad, and have a fender cut another tire down or possibly cut a brake line or something. They must complete that work. And, of course, the NASCAR official, the Bush official, standing there watching the work and even getting some help from some of the other crews, the Detroit Gasket crew there. Looks like Elvin Rector and L.D. Ottinger's crew trying to help out a fellow competitor. They know they what an outstanding run Mass was having, and everyone was hoping maybe his bad luck in Bush Series racing would come to an end tonight, but that's not the case. A tough break here. The latest caution for that spin down in turn one, and of course, nowhere to go for Rick Mast. Well, he goes back out now. He is just one lap down, but I don't think that car is going to be driving as good as it was before because that right front wheel doesn't look like that it's towed the right way. Let's take a look at the leaderboard here under the fifth caution flag of the night at this sold-out Raceway Park. Steve Grissom, who won a week ago, back up front here. Ernie Irvin, who had trouble getting in the field, even had to run the qualifying race now being shown in second spot. Dave Mater the third, a four-time All-American Challenge Series champion. And we have trouble in the pits. Michael Waltrip's car trying to get out of the pits, and apparently he has had a wheel come off, and his car backing up pit roads, and if you see the sparks from beneath the car. Last year's winner, the defending champion of the NASCAR Kroger 200. Let's check in with Benny Parsons. BP. That's exactly what happened, Jerry. They were changing the left side, and they did not get the lug nuts on the left front. It's fallen off. He has backed it into the pit. They're putting the tire on. But meanwhile, the pace car again is up between three and four, so they've got to hustle. Still working on the automobile. They are tied in the lug nuts now. Well, he was just trying to get out of the pits. It looked like in front of the pace car a minute ago after a lengthy stay. So field now comes by, and he will not make it out again. So it's a possibility he could have lost. We'll check with the scoring and see. But uh, he is now being shown two laps down. A tough break for Michael Walter, the defending champion here of this 200-lap event. Boy, how quickly things can change. Hmm. But there's a man having a good night. He had a good night a week ago, his first win ever. That's uh, Steve Grissom driving the car number 31 as they get the Spraker car on the wrecker now and headed back towards the pit area. Left side turn. Still got a pit of right rear and a left rear on the damn thing. We're listening in to Michael Walter. Pace car is just going out on the racetrack. The pace car is going in for three. I'm two laps down, Fryer. Talking to Mike Fryer, his engine builder. Well, he's, he's a couple of laps down uh, to Michael Waltrip in the country time car. We'll see if we can get a word with him, Jerry. Let's check in with Michael Waltrip. Michael, this is Jerry Fudge at ESP, and Michael, a tough break in the pits there. What happened a minute ago? Well, Jerry, probably not the best time to comment on what happened. You know, I was real proud of my team, or my car, the way it was handling. We were coming up through there. Seemed to have screwed up here. A uh, tough break for Michael Waltrip. He pulls the car back behind the wall, and that's uh, those things happen. Apparently, they, they thought there's so much noise, and you've heard Benny Parsons trying to talk in the pits over that rumble and noise here in the infield as the cars go by, and apparently a miscue in the pits. They were unable to get the lug nuts fastened on the left front, and Michael trying to get back out without losing a lap, and they have a tough break here for the defending Kroger NASCAR 200. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Jerry, I'm with, uh, I guess, a dejected Rick Mass is the best I could say. Just know where to go, Rick. One of those uh, lap cars we have trouble with every week. Jumped in front of me off of four, and I was on the gas and I run up on him. We got ready to go into one. He motioned me to the outside. He went to turn down. By the time he turned down, he just stopped, and there it was. I hit him. We turned and we wrecked. You look like you had a winner tonight. Well, I thought I was pacing myself. I guess not. Rick, better luck next time. Well, you know, the Raven Boats Buick's been fast for the last three months. Just stuff like this keeps happening. We'll be okay. Jerry, back to you. A tough break for Rick Mass. We are under caution for the fifth time today. Showing the way, car number 31, 27-year-old Steve Grissom from Gaston, Alabama. Stay tuned. Lots of laps to come. We'll be back. If you love cars, you'll love Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring. Every week, Auto Week puts you inside the world's most exciting cars, GTs, sports sedans, collector cars, 4x4s, front drivers. 
Auto Week makes you an insider with industry news, personality profiles, old cars, columnists, the best classified anywhere. And nobody covers racing like Auto Week. You get the fastest coverage of Formula One, sports cars, stockers, Indy cars. It's all in Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring every week. Call 1-800-354-6100 for this ESPN Race Weekend Special. And get Auto Week at our lowest price ever, just $17.95 for 52 issues. But do it now. This offer expires Monday, August 13th. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever. Call 1-800-354-6100. Ayrton Senna has regained the point-standing lead from arch-rival Milan Prost. Prost will stop at nothing to get it back. The battle resumes at the Grand Prix of Hungary, Sunday morning at 7.50 Eastern, live on ESPN. Tonight's Speed World coverage of the NASCAR Kroger 200 is brought to you by Olympic, the family of stain products that protect your home from damage rain can do. Olympic stops the rain by Levi's 505 and 506 jeans and by non-toxic biodegradable Simple Green, the clean solution. Back in Indianapolis Raceway Park for our ESPN Speed Roll coverage of the NASCAR Kroger 200. We are under the caution flag for the fifth time today. There are 18 cars in the lead lap, man, and it's been an exciting race thus far. Yes, it has. Green, Steve Grissom in car number 31, of course, leading the race. And Jerry, he didn't pit during this caution. In fact, he last pitted on lap 65. Now, he can make it as far as fuel is concerned, but we wonder about the tires on that car. Most of the other cars behind him have new tires on their cars, and normally, as we said earlier, those new tires run better here. Well, Steve Grissom has a fellow working in his pits by the name of Steve Bird. And many of you people who follow the Bush Series racing remember that Steve Bird, or Birdie as he is known, was the crew chief last year when young Rob Moroso became the youngest ever Bush Series national champion at age 21. And Bird, who left the Moroso team after Rockingham this year on the Winston Cup Tour and decided to come back to Bush Series racing, now works for that car number 31, the Grissom Racing Enterprises effort, the Big Mama Meat Snacks Oldsmobile. And Grissom has been impressive since Bird came on board. Yes, he has. He has been gaining every week. Here's Ernie Irvin, who is running in second place. Now, he also chose not to pit during this caution, nor neither did the car number 56, which is being driven, of course, by Dave Mater. Dave Mater III now taking over for Ronald Cooper, the family-owned operation there. And that's L.D. Ottinger, the Detroit Gaskets car, the Ron Parker-owned machine. And that, of course, is Davey Johnson, the car number 26, the rookie driver from Imperial, Pennsylvania, who qualified on the front row. He is being shown in the fourth spot. L.D. Ottinger, of course, a lap down. There's Davey Allison right behind him. Davey is also a lap down, running in 25th position. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Benny? I'm Jerry. I'm with Ronnie Silver, the crew chief on Michael Walters, Country Time Pontiac. What happened? Just miscommunication? No, we had it all, we had it all figured out what it was going to do for it. The four-tire changed the boy on the rear. His socket was either wore out or something that wouldn't take the lug off. And no matter what you did, it wouldn't take it off, so we had to put those back on. And then when he came back, the boy went to do the left side while we was... But my guy's still doing the right rear, and he took the left front off. We had to let him down and go to try to keep from getting lapped. The left front come up. Had some problems. That's the worst thing, I guess, pit stop there ever had. Jerry, some problems down here. Tough break for Michael Walter Pierre in the lap set after half past the halfway point. We'll be back after this from our sponsors. Mom, dinner here tonight. No problem. Got a lot of things to clean. You need Simple Green for bathrooms, kitchens, appliances, carpets, and upholstery. Non-toxic, biodegradable, concentrated Simple Green cleans just about everything. Simple Green, the only cleaner you'll ever need. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. The one and only. The clean, the crisp, the cold, the king of beers. Nothing beats the blood. Nothing beats the king of beers. Nothing beats the
Life's full of simple pleasures. Like the comfort of Levi's jeans. Or had you forgotten? Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, green flag flies to Steve Grissom, the youngster from Gadsden, Alabama, trying to hold off the veteran Ernie Irvin, Winston Cup campaigner in the car number 75. Grissom in the 31. Irvin also in an Oldsmobile, following him in second spot. Single file, no, not single file. Davy Johnson in the car number 26 makes it double file, headed for turn three. Out of four, Ned Jarrett, they're trying to make a move. Irvin trying to get to the inside, Ned, but there's only one groove in one. Only one good fast groove, but he's going to try it again as he slams down on the inside. He might have the measure of him. No, he can't get traction off at turn two. Irvin gets a little bit loose and has to drop back in line. We made the point that Grissom's tires might be going away. There is some 65 laps to the conclusion of this event, 135 laps complete. Grissom now pulling some three car lengths over Ernie Irvin down at turn one. Well, Irvin has uh, tires that's been on there a while, not as long as Steve Grissom's tires, uh, Jerry, but uh, it looks like Grissom is able to pull away from him a little bit now. L.D. Ottinger, the third car in line. Here's a spin. Joe Nemechek spinning around in car number 87. No caution yet this time. Now the caution comes out as Nemechek gets it back under control, but the caution was already out. Well, he had spun into the infield of one of the barriers around one of the light poles. Joe Nemechek rookie driver from Lakeland, Florida. That's the car prepared by Donnie Allison. He had been running back in the 12th spot, Ned, and this is the car. He was the All-Pro Series champion a year ago, and now running as a rookie in this, this year and had some pretty impressive runs, but he's got some damage on the right front. Yes, it looks like the fender might be pressed in against the tire, so he will have to come into the pits and get that corrected. Let's take a look again at what might have happened to Nemechek. Well, we see the cars coming off at turn two, and there's Nemechek down on the inside, the red car, number 87. You can see Bobby Hamilton going by on the outside in the black car, number eight. There goes Kyle Petty and several other cars going by as he spins down in the grass. And I'll tell you, that grass is awfully slick. You can't get a, a bite with these slick tires on that grass as much rain as they've had here in the last day or so. Just one more angle here, looking down the back straightaway, and Nemechek's car just trying. You see the, the smoke from the spewing tires as he's spinning down the back straights. He hits that grass and begins to skate. No traction once he hits it. I'll tell you, he was fortunate not to hit too much down on the inside and was able to get the car righted and headed back out, and he'll be coming into the pits here pretty shortly, I'm sure, when the pits open. Al Nemechek now making his way on the pit road, and there the car is on the jacks, and they are the man that is leading right now is Steve Grissom, and why is Grissom running so well? Well, let's find out from our Benny Parsons. Birdie, why didn't you come in the pits? Well, we come in earlier there with 60 or 70 laps down. All the tires look great and everything else. Right now, track position's good. Uh, we're just as fast as them guy with new tires. That last two laps, we run uh, 23.30s, you know? That's just as fast as them guys with new tires. So we're just going to hope. We're a little slow in the start here, but we're going to hope we can get going, and I think we can get this one. I tell you what, you were with the Rob Moroso team last year. This year, you're over with Steve Grissom. Did you find guys find some magic, or was it there all the time? Uh, Steve's a great driver, and he can tell me what's going on. We just click real good, and we got a great crew. These guys really work hard. They ain't worried about lunch or nothing when they go, and they get the work done, and then they go to lunch. And that's what it takes, a hard-working team. Okay, go to work. Thank you, Benny. Indeed, Steve Grissom has the work ethic. He was a high school All-American football player in Alabama. He's from Gadsden, Alabama. He spurned offers to play college football from some of the best teams and decided to go racing. And here's a young man who's going racing again, Rick Mass, minus a lot of sheet metal in the front of his Buick and that Raven Boats car, and never say die. Rick Mass, he's not in the point standings then, but he's got something to prove to that crew working awfully hard to get the car back on the racetrack. Well, of course, he's able to get Raven Boats a little bit of exposure on television here for one thing, but uh, he's not in a battle for the championship, Jerry, but he is certainly in the top 20 in the Bush Grand National points, and that pays money at the end of the year, so. Get out there and get as many points as you can. As you can see, he's ranked 11th right now in the Bush Grand National points and would like to move in the top 10. Rick Mast, a victim early on. You see Davey Johnson's car coming out of the pits and back up front, some of the lap cars. L.D. Ottinger's car and Michael Waltham's car, the misfortune you heard a little bit ago from Ronnie Silver in the pits and Benny Parks has talked to the crew chief there. As we're getting set to go, green flag racing. Pete Babb waving the green flag in the Bush field. Back single file in turn one. Well, he got off to a pretty good start that time. Birdie said that he was off to a slow start, but that time it worked okay for him. 
those are lap cars behind the leader, Steve Grissom, the car number two and the car number 30. And Ottinger, the Detroit Gaskets car, trying to make a move. Ottinger, a winner this year at Bristol, Tennessee, trying to get to the inside here in the front stretch. Of course, he's trying to get back in the lead lap. In case another caution comes out, Michael Waltrip, two laps down in the car number 30. He'd like to get one of those back. Either one of those drivers could be in contention if they could get back in the lead lap. Michael Waltrip, who started back in 16th spot, and was up to third prior to having that problem in the pits. Now showing two laps down. Those cars running single file behind Steve Grissom. Ernie Urban's got to be sitting back there pounding the wheel. He just has nowhere to go. As Michael Waltrip now pulls on the inside of L.D. Ottinger, makes the pass. Here comes Urban. He just drives her deep down on the inside. Didn't stick too good for him, but I believe he will be able to get around L.D. Ottinger. Well, I think Michael Walter kicked the door open, and Ernie snuck through before L.D. Ottinger could close it. And now the car number 56, Dave Mater, trying to get to the inside. His car will not stick on the bottom of the track and slides back up in behind Ottinger. Mater running in the third position. That's the fourth and fifth place cars back there. You saw a moment ago, that was Presley in the car number 59. Back up front, the lead car is Grissom, and he's getting a lot of heat now from the lap car of Michael Walter. Pontiac of Walter trying to get to the inside of one car spinning. That is Mater, a third place car, has looped it through the infield, and he is dodging light poles, spinning it around in the dark. Caution flag comes out, and Michael Walter will get by Steve Grissom and get one of his laps back. A great move by Michael Walter, and Mater now finds his way back through the infield, taking a couple of paths. Agricultural racing back up off the grass. There is Mater, the four time short track champion for the All American Challenge Series. And that car was running in third spot. And there's Michael Walter, the other man who just had the fans on their feet as he was able to get one of his two laps back. And don't count him out. A lot of racing yet to go. More than 50 laps remaining. And Michael Walter, in about a 10 lap period here, has gotten one of those laps back. So, hey. He might get that other one back and uh, be right back in the thick of this thing. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Dave Mater now. He was in third place trying to get underneath the lap car of Ottinger. And it looked like they touched just a little bit, Jerry, as they came off a of turn two, and around he went. Down on the inside, the field goes by on the outside, and once he hits that grass, that wet grass, not a whole lot he can do but just hold on and hope he doesn't get into the fence. At least there is a lot of room down there on that grass before they get down to a fence. Well, there are no spectators allowed in the infield here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and uh, they're just uh, the pit areas and a wide open spaces and a few cameramen, a few of our ESPN cameramen doing the dipsy doodle down there trying to dodge uh, the Buick, uh, but a great job. But uh, now tell me, do you, as a driver, do you really have your eyes open when this kind of thing's happening in the pits, in, in the infield? Well, you know, a lot of times you'll hear drivers say, well, I just closed my eyes and hope for the best. There wasn't a great deal that he could do because that grass is so wet, and of course these tires without tread on them don't get a lot of attraction, so it, it makes it uh, very tough to do much about it. How about it, Benny Parsons? Hey, I know he had his eyes closed. I never heard <laughs> my life spun out that I didn't close my eyes. Hey, guys, you don't want to see what's going to happen. Believe me, when you see light poles and other cars and walls coming, you don't want to see it. I mean, when all that stuff, you close your eyes and just hope for the best. <laughs> Well, you wear out the eyelid muscles on some of those spins, and uh, they're back on the racetrack. Dave Mater hoping to get the car back up. We've got a lot of laps of racing to come your way, a whole lot of racing left. We'll be back after this. You may not have thought about getting a Sears diehard battery until you've had a little time alone to think about it. Diehard, more power when you need it most. Extra strength Rolades, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. Chuck Norris and the Delta Force want you. And you. And especially the international crime cartel. America's Maximum Assault Force is back in action. Chuck Norris, Delta Force 2, Operation Stranglehold. Rated R. Starts Friday, August 24th at theaters everywhere. Sunday night, 
Batting champion Tony Gwynn trails in his quest for a fifth title. He mounts his charge as the Padres face the Astros. It's Sunday Night Baseball, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Little over 50 laps of racing remaining. The green flag waves, and Steve Grissom is leads him down the turn one. Grissom in front of the lap car. L.D. Ottinger. Ottinger's the car number two. That is the Oldsmobile for Ottinger, the Oldsmobile for Grissom. And Dale Jarrett has spun. He has looped his car around. He has come into contact. Coming up out of turn two, the car number 32. Leslie's crunch car has been tagged, and the former victim, they're racing back to the line as the caution flag comes out once again. They're trying to get a lap back, and Ottinger can't quite do it. Well, Dale Grissom. Jarrett was running in the seventh position, got tagged going into turn one, and looped the Nestle's crunch Pontiac. We'll see how much damage is done to it, if he's going to be able to continue on around. Looks like some sheet metal hanging off the rear. There is Dale Jarrett. And his car, as Ned said, getting some, sustaining some damage in the left rear. John Irvin and the crew will be going to work on that. Let's take a look, see if we can see exactly what happened on the restart. Okay, you can see Jarrett down on the inside. And there's Morgan Shepard. Looked like tapped him just a little bit as Jarrett was trying to move around Michael Waltrip. And around Jarrett went. Well, Morgan Shepard was the eighth place car. Jarrett was seventh on that restart. And they were really two abreast trying to get through a very, very tight turn. There is Dale Jarrett. His car now back in the pack. Under caution here for the eighth time today. A record, a record for cautions in a race for Bush Series 17. Set earlier in the year up at New Hampshire. And of course, uh, we are halfway there, but I think we're gonna run out of laps. We've had a lot of exciting action here tonight at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Laps winding down, safety car leading Steve Grissom, and that team has really come together. We will hold the camera here as you watch your favorite cars and drivers come by. You sort of get an idea of where they are in relation. There is the car number nine of Morgan Shepard. Ironhead, they call him, Dale Earnhardt. Kenny Wallace in car number 36. Dale Jarrett had just spun. Some of the drivers who have had to park it had tough luck. Tommy Houston, who had a tough night, of course, and will drop down on the points. Jack Ingram, the five-time champion. The rookie, Ed Faree. Jeff Burton driving the Sam, er Sam Ard effort. And Larry Pearson, who was subbing for the injured Darrell Walter. Back up front, and that is Steve Grissom showing the way. And here is Dale Jarrett making his way on the pit road. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Jerry Punch, they have some damage on the left rear of the automobile. Part of the quarter panel is dragging the racetrack. Also, they're making a chassis adjustment on the right rear. Evidently, the car a little bit too tight because they took a little bit of bite out of the car. Back on the pit, back on the racetrack, out of the pit. And the Goo Goo Cluster Buick going by. That's Davey Johnson and Jimmy Hensley coming in now. Hensley's car was not handling like he would have liked it to, although he had worked his way back up to fifth place, and he has made a pit stop. There are 17 cars in the lead lap. We have an Oldsmobile leading the race here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. The manufacturer standings, that's Steve Grissom, who won last week at Pulaski, showing the way. 1990 wins, Ned, a good, uh, good effort by Pontiac. Yes, they are having very good success on this circuit, certainly much better success than they're having in the Winston Cup Series. Forward, the one win that Mark Martin coming at Myrtle Beach just after uh, Mark's outstanding effort at Daytona. And there is Pete Babb indicating the yellow flag restart here. He's getting the cars lined up for the restart on the short track. And Chuck Bound, the highest running Pontiac. That's the Nescafe Pontiac. And you know if he's not going to lead it, he'll be in the top five. And he's being shown in fourth spot. Of course, he's one of the reasons that Pontiac is at the top of the heap as far as the car manufacturer's points are concerned with those five wins so far this year. He could make it six. We're going to go green as the laps are winding down. It will be 47 laps to go here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Stop number 21 on the $4 million Bush Tour. And the youngster, Steve Grissom, trying to hold them off the crowd on their feet. Jam-packed house at Indianapolis Raceway Park as the green flag waves. And they're three breasts beating and banging to turn one. Well, they... Most of them get singled out as they go into the turn, but I'll tell you, you wondered if they were going to make it the way they hit it into the turn. Not a single turn signal in the bunch, Ned. They just no. all sort of try to blend Look in. Look at Earnhardt go. Making a good move there. 
Well, he's running out of laps to intimidate folks, so he's got to get busy there. And now making a move, doing a little intimidating of his own. That's the black and orange, number 75, Ernie Irvin. He moves underneath the lap car of Ottinger. Irvin now to within a car length and a half of the lead car of Steve Grissom. Well, he's beginning to put a little pressure on him. Has he been holding something back? Back in the pack, Morgan Shepard, the three-time winner here in the Chevrolet, going three abreast underneath Chuck Bound. Shepard in the car number nine, the Texas Pete car. The Pontiac of Chuck Bound just to his right side, and Shepard is literally hanging that car on the ragged edge. And now up front, they're waging war for the lead. Yes, Ernie Irvin, a little sheet metal contact says to come off of turn four. Let's see, can he do it? He leans on him going into turn one. Can they make it? He continues to lean on him as he comes off a of turn two, but Grissom holding on to the outside groove and holds on to the lead. Well, they say in the movies, Rubbin is racing, and they're racing here at IRP tonight. Well, I'll tell you, there is racing everywhere. I don't know why people bought seats tonight, because no one is sitting down. They literally are on their feet here watching as Earnhardt now tries to make a move inside of Robert Presley. Out of turn two, the good wrench Chevrolet moving inside. The car number 59, he makes the move. Yeah, pretty impressive pass there. He just got down there and uh, drove right on by on that tough inside group. The drivers have been told by their crew members, laps are winding down. No need for tires, no need for fuel. Just hold the pedal down and turn left. Let's make an impressive show. Now, Earnhardt on the move. Now, that's Michael Waltrip in the car number 30. He had gotten one of his laps back a minute ago, and now he's trying to make a move inside of Ernie Irvin. Yeah, he'd like to pass Ernie, and then, of course, get up there and pass Steve Grissom, then hope for another caution, and he would be back in the lead lap and back in the thick of the battle. Morgan Shepard is on the move. That is the car to the left of your screen, the car number nine, the Texas Pete Colors. Shepard starting back in the pack, not having a good qualifying effort. That car back in 19th spot. Well, there's Grissom out front, but look at Morgan Shepard back there in the yellow car. He tried to make it three deep, but that didn't quite work. Morgan Shepard was trying to mix it up with Michael Walter. He lost some spots now. Michael Walter, that car is a lap down, but he won this race a year ago from the pole. Looked to be very impressive in the Ronnie Silver prepared car. Morgan Shepard now trying to move to the inside of Kyle Petty. Now Shepard has peeled some of that sheet metal loose in the front of that Chevrolet Lumina he's driving. A little bit of flapping sheet metal on the right side. The fender at that contact a minute ago with the Pontiac of Michael Waltrip. Now you see some of the sheet metal as he's trying to make a move inside of Kyle Petty. And there's Dale Earnhardt trying to move up on the outside of him. Three great drivers, Winston Cup drivers, battling it out here at the Indianapolis Raceway Park. Shepard hanging tough down on the inside, but he hasn't been able to get around Kyle Petty. Now, is he going to lose a position? No, he's back up there. Now he gets traction. They bang together a little bit coming off the turn. They bang together there again, but Shepard gets the pass. But Kyle Petty's not going to give up that easy. He gives him a little love tap there on the back bumper. But Shepard now, look at the sheet metal on the right front of that Chevrolet, but uh, still going strong. That's a fourth, fifth, and sixth place cars, and there's the leader, of course, Steve Grissom, showing the way. Laps are winding down. He is trying to win it at IRP. A few laps left. It's going to get hot. Stay tuned. You may not have thought about getting a Sears diehard battery until you've had a little time alone to think about it. Diehard. More power when you need it most. If you love cars, you'll love Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring. Every week, Auto Week puts you inside the world's most exciting cars, GTs, sports sedans, collector cars, 4x4s, front drivers. Auto Week makes you an insider with industry news, personality profiles, old cars, columnists, the best classified anywhere. And nobody covers racing like Auto Week. You get the fastest coverage of Formula One, sports cars, stalkers, Indy cars. It's all in Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring every week. 
Call 1-800-354-6100 for this ESPN Race Weekend Special. And get Auto Week at our lowest price ever, just $17.95 for 52 issues. But do it now. This offer expires Monday, August 13th. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever. Call 1-800-354-6100. It's getting wild here in the late waning laps at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Dale Earnhardt trying to make a move inside of Kyle Petty. That would be for the fifth spot. Kyle Petty trying to hold off Earnhardt. Kyle's Pontiac and Earnhardt in the Chevrolet. Two Winston Cup veterans vying for fifth place. Less than 40 laps to go. In fact, 34 laps remaining here in the NASCAR. Kroger 200 at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Earnhardt tried him down on the inside like Morgan Shepard did, but he was not able to make that pass. And here's a spin. Jimmy Hensley, car number 25, spinning around. We'll watch from the inside as he tries to refire the car. Apparently to the engine went dead. The caution is out. And now he gets it fired, gets it in gear, and heads around, but the caution is out. What a great shot from inside our Carquest cage cam there. You saw Hensley. You could see nothing out of the windshield, and he has had simply tried to push the car to get it refired. And through all the smoke, he put the car back in gear, clutched it, got it fired, and has moved away. And here's the car that has spun out up in turn three, the car number 34. Of course, that's Jack Sprague. Jack Sprague. Apparently came in pretty good contact with someone, Jerry, and then spun in turn three. The caution was already out. He is a rookie competitor. That's the Frank C.C. racing car that the John Junk prepared machine that was driven last year by Jimmy Spencer. Moved on to the Winston Cup ranks. Caution flag again for the ninth time here. Let's take a look at what happened with Jimmy Hensley. Okay, there he is, just uh, cruising right along. And it looks like he let go of the wheel for just a moment. He was on the inside of Elton Sawyer in car number 27. And you can see his hand come off of the wheel as he grabs all the steering wheel he can get, Jerry, as the car is spinning around of course he didn't want to cross his arms over and we see him reach down for the gear shift and then the car died where he's looking now for the starter to refire the engine and there he is on the track ready to go again well textbook spin they tell you in the driver's meeting the nascar drivers are told don't try to turn the car back up in the traffic it'll come across the racetrack and you'll end up getting t-boned and he didn't he listened very well and got the car refired our leader is steve grissom an impressive performance for this young driver let's check in the pits with benny parsons Jerry Punch, Steve Bird, the crew chief on the Steve Grissom automobile, told us a moment ago they don't want to see caution flags. And he was right. In about two laps, as he said, he pulled away from Ernie Irvin by what? Half a straightaway. And well, guess what? Another caution flag comes out. Steve Grissom looks like he's got the car to win, but he needs a break. If he could just keep it green for a few more laps here, just 32 laps to go, he may be able to get his second win in a row. Two wins in two weeks for Steve Grissom. He's showing the way here. This capacity crowd enjoying every lap of it, as you will. When you stay tuned, we'll be back. Days of Thunder, this summer's most exciting movie. Now get a rare on-location look as NASCAR goes Hollywood. It's an insider's look at auto racing and movie making with exciting behind-the-scenes footage available only on this ESPN home video. NASCAR Goes Hollywood, the making of Days of Thunder, only $19.95. Order yours today. Call 1-800-255-8300. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. Now for only $34. Call toll-free 800-832-8700. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-832-8700 now. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, 174 of 200 laps complete. Steve Grissom, Ernie Irvin, Chuck Bound, Kyle Petty, and Dale Earnhardt in the top five. We'll show you six through ten. Presley Wallace, Resendez, Elton Sawyer, and Ed Barrier. 
Morgan Shepard, who had been running so well after starting back in the pack in the Texas Pete car, was up to fourth place, has had his troubles here. He was in the pits a moment ago for an unscheduled stop, and you see that sheet metal in the front of the car, Ned? They had their troubles. Yes, they did. They had to pull that sheet metal away. The NASCAR officials looked at it and said it was rubby, and the green flag is out now. Shepard back in the field at the back of the pack. Green flag waves, the ninth caution flag of the day over, and Shepard is in the back of the pack. We'll have to hurry if he's going to get back up front. They're two by two through the first couple of turns. Here as the laps are winding down. There's Kyle Petty and Dale Earnhardt being shown in the fifth spot. Back up front. The car number 31, that's the leader. That's Steve Grissom. But behind him, the Pontiac is on the move. That is Michael Waltrip, who was two laps down. It's now still a lap down, but would love to have a chance to get around. And Waltrip drives it right against the wall in turn one. Boy, he's trying his best to get back in the lead lap. He might have it this time, Jerry. Let's see. He's going to have to lean on him a little bit, but he don't mind doing that because he knows how important it would be if another caution should come out if he could get back in the lead lap, but not this time. Michael Walter, four Bush Series wins, two this year. He won at Richmond, Virginia after sitting on the pole, and he won at Dover, Delaware, driving the car number 30. Now, that's the second place car number 75, the black car in your screen. That's Ernie Urban. So Grissom, the leader, then the lap car of Walter, then Urban. Now making a move on the inside. Car number 42, that's the battle for third spot. Kyle Petty takes the move inside of Chuck Bound. Now, Kyle Petty has a little fresher tires on his car than does Ernie Urban and Steve Grissom. Michael Walter has fresher tires than any of them, and it looks like it's working for him. But will he be able to get around Grissom and get back in the lead lap? There's Chuck Bound, and there's Earnhardt back in the fifth spot. Michael Waltrip is going to have to hustle less than 25 laps. It'll be 21 laps to go. 179 complete that time by everyone jostling for position. Billy Standards in the car number 47, battling along with, beside the car number 99, former series champion Tommy Ellis. And Michael Waltrip is off the pace. His car is slowing in the backstretch. His car has dropped out of the picture you see to the right of your screen of Puff of Smoke. Grissom, your leader, he was being hurried by Walter, but now he has pulled away, and there, a lot of smoke coming from the car and a little bit of backfire. Walter's day is done. Yeah, I think it's all over for him tonight. He, he made a gallant run and after getting two laps down because of a miscue in the pits, but it's all over now. What an effort for Michael Walter, but what an effort for this youngster, car number 31, Steve Grissom, who had not had a Bush Grand National Series win until last week at Pulaski County Speedway in Dublin, Virginia. Set on the pole, went on to win it there. This would be the biggest win of his career if he can hang on. That's Ernie And Ernie. there's trouble in turn one. Dale Jarrett, I believe, has spun. And there's a car spinning off of turn two on the backstretch. That's Patty. Davey Johnson and Jimmy Hensley spinning around again there. Patty Moise also involved up there and the car number 44, Bobby Labonte. So four or five cars spinning up in turns one and two. Dale Jarrett has hit one of the ball. There's the Hensley car. And here's the Bobby Labonte machine. Now the grass very, very slippery from rains earlier today. Labonte trying to get his car. He's got it fired, but he just can't get any traction in the grass to get back and the field is passing by. Tough break for Labonte. Yes, it is. Of course, he's uh, very high in the point standings in third place, as a matter of fact. Just can't get traction. You can see the rear wheel spinning on the car. And there could have been oil going into that turn from the car of Michael Walter. We saw the smoke coming from that car, although there was a lot of cars running real close together when they went into the turn, but a lot of them spun down there, and there could have been oil from the Michael Walter car. A lot of cars slipping and sliding down there, bringing out the 10th caution flag of the day. Finally, Bobby Labonte gets the car back down the back straightaway. There's our leader, the front two cars. That's Grissom and Irvin. Steve Grissom, two international, two IRP starts. He finished 24th and 88 and 6th and 89. And 10 caution flags. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Steve Berg, more and more caution flags, huh, bud? Them cautions are killing us here. We need five laps without getting past, then we can pull away from them. And these caution flags are killing us here. I don't know if we can do it or not, Benny. We're just going to try the best we can. Steve Grissom had not won a race until last week. What, winning the Grease with you or what? Well, I, I don't know. You know, everybody likes to win, Benny. We just got a good combination, and it's working real good, you know. Okay, good luck. Thank you, Benny. 
Well, whether he wins or not, he has had an impressive run tonight, and I think he certainly should be proud of his effort. There's Davy Johnson, one of the cars that uh, spun back there. Let's check in again down in turn one for this 10th caution flag. Ned, let's see what happened inside Hensley's car. Well, we're inside of Hensley's car. There had been a spin behind it, but you see a car gets loose in front of him, and then Jimmy's car gets loose, and you can see him working that steering wheel once again. See the smoke coming from the tires while he was still on the pavement. And then he got down in the grass, shifted her up in gear, got it to going again. Boy, he looks so relaxed, that left leg jumping in the clutch. He just put it back in gear and drove away. Capacity crowd on hand for the waning laps here at the NASCAR Kroger 200. Steve Grissom is going to try to hold them off. Stay tuned. We'll see if he can do it. One Top Motor Oil announces one top guarantee. Ask your participating service center about Quaker State's top lubrication guarantee. 250,000 miles or 10 years. Register your new car absolutely free at a participating service center. Use only Quaker State. Have oil and filter changed as directed at a service center. And if any lubricated engine part suffers an oil-related breakdown, you're covered. Quaker State guarantees it in writing. The big Q is one top motor oil. If you love cars, you'll love Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring. Every week, Auto Week puts you inside the world's most exciting cars, GTs, sports sedans, collector cars, 4x4s, front drivers. Auto Week makes you an insider with industry news, personality profiles, old cars, columnists, the best classified anywhere. And nobody covers racing like Auto Week. You get the fastest coverage of Formula One, sports cars, stalkers, Indy cars. It's all in Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring every week. Call 1-800-354-6100 for this ESPN Race Weekend Special. And get Auto Week at our lowest price ever, just $17.95 for 52 issues. But do it now. This offer expires Monday, August 13th. Get Auto Week at the lowest price ever. Call 1-800-354-6100. Ten caution flags tonight here at Indianapolis Raceway Park and a young man who has matured tremendously in the past couple of weeks, 27-year-old Steve Grissom from Gaston, Alabama. He will lead him back to the green flag. You heard Steve Bird tell Benny Parsons they need five laps of green flag racing action. They need to be able to hang over five laps and then their tires will come in and they can pull away. Ernie Irvin behind him in the car number 75 to the right of your screen. He knows he must get him in the next four or five laps if he's to have a chance, Ned. Yes, and he is moving in as they go into turn three. You can see him moving in closer and closer. But Grissom gets a good jump off the of turn four. Holds on to the lead, but Irvin putting the pressure on. Ernie Irvin driving the Yukon Red Oldsmobile, the Charlie Henderson on car that won on ESPN last year at Bristol, Tennessee with Rick Wilson aboard. And he's moving in a half a car length now in turn three. Grissom is going to try to hang on. Laps are winding down, and Ernie Irvin knows he's got about three laps to catch him, or Grissom will pull away. Well, Grissom's tires apparently have not seated in the way he wants them yet. And, of course, having somebody that close on your bumper and maybe giving him a little tap every once in a while doesn't help the situation, and he almost hit the wall that time. Boy, he got very close to the wall on the outside. Here now, Irvin trying to move him down on the inside as Grissom goes high, gives him a little bit of running room, but Grissom has the preferred groove off of turn four. Steve Grissom using every inch of racing asphalt here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. A capacity crowd on their feet as laps are winding down. It'll be 10 to go this time by. 10 laps as they come in. And the car number nine of Morgan Shepard calls it an evening. Sheet metal, a tough break for the three-time NASCAR Kroger 200 winner. Back up front. Pete Babb holds up two hands, 10 laps to go, and now Grissom's car seems to be running a little bit better. Yeah, I think he settled down a little bit, Jerry. The tires have come in for him. He is able to make a better line around the racetrack. You see him pull away a little bit as he comes off of the turn that time. The car didn't kick out as much as it has before. Here's a battle for the third position. Kyle Petty running in third, Chuck Bowen running in fourth. So Bowen wants to get up there and try to get as many points as he possibly can. Of course, he has a good lead already, but... He'd like the position, but Kyle Petty now holding on to third. Darrell Pontiac there battling for the third spot. That is Kyle Petty in the car number 42, the split fire spark plug car, the Ted Condor on machine, and of course the Hensley racing effort, the Nescafe car of our current Grand National Point leader, Chuck Bound. And Chuck gives him a little bit of a nudge, lets him know he's back there, and the laps are winding down. And not too far in front of them are the leaders, so they're certainly in contention. Kyle goes high, loses a little bit of time there, but 
mound, not able to take advantage of it. It's got to be getting a little slick out there. We've had 10 caution flags and some speedy drive on the track. The tires are getting a little worn, and now Chuck Mound really has his hands full, twisting that steering wheel, nearly losing control out of turn four. Kyle's certainly protecting that high line that has worked well for most of the drivers tonight. And you can see they're not very far behind the first and second place cars. That's the lead two cars there, the 31 car of Steve Grissom. Then comes Ernie Irwin, and only about five car lengths back to that battle between Petty and Bell, Kyle Petty and Chuck Bell. They headed to turn one, and they're running them down, then. Yes, they are. Dale Earnhardt, not in the picture there, but he is running in fifth place. Kenny Wallace running in the sixth position. Laps are winding down. Here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, Steve Grissom trying to hold off Ernie Irvin. Five laps to go, that time by. Five to go. Steve Grissom hoping to pick up the biggest win of his young Bush Grand National Series career. The ninth annual Kroger NASCAR 200, a purse of over $109,000. And here's the battle for third spot. Chuck Bowne continues to put the pressure and the bumper every once in a while to Kyle Petty. Bowen is a little faster, I believe, than Kyle Gary. If he could get around him, he might be able to get up there and challenge those two for the front position, but he has not been able to get around Kyle Petty. That would be five points if he could move around Kyle Petty, and, you know, towards the end of the season, that could make a big difference, and, of course, I'm sure there is quite a bit of difference in the money from third to fourth place as well. Three laps to go that time by. And Earnhardt now beginning to make his move. He will come in the picture as Chuck Mount can't quite get the nose of his Nescafe Pontiac beneath it, but now he slips a little bit, and Earnhardt is on his rear bumper. Yeah, he lost a lot of ground right there in, in that move, but look how quickly he moves back up on Kyle Petty. Kyle now sort of protecting the inside line with just two laps to go. It'll be white flag this time for Steve Gresson, the 27-year-old driver from Gaston, Alabama. The battle really heating up. Chuck Bowne has to make his move. There is Grissom and Irvin, the front two cars. Here's the battle, third, fourth, and fifth. That is Kyle Petty. Back up front, here is Steve Grissom coming out of turn four to take, and Kyle Petty spinning sideways out of turn four, and Chuck Bowne let him know he was there. No yellow flag. Kyle gets the car righted, and he will head back on the racetrack. White flag is waving to the field as they come by. So Steve Grissom will get the checkered flag this time around. He knows there was trouble on the track, but he's still coming down wide open, and you can see his crew as he gets the checkered flag. Boy, they are they happy. Earnhardt just sliding by, gets by. The car number 63 of Chuck Bound and Earnhardt, a gallant effort, but that's the man that they are very proud of tonight. And the crew celebrating there at Steve Burr. Yes, Steve, you gotta be happy. After winning last week at Pulaski, and they come back for the biggest win of the year. Uh, this young man's career, Ernie Urban pulls up alongside and waves and gives his congratulations to Steve Grissom, an impressive young man, and had a tremendous effort. And here's Earnhardt, who ended up finishing in third spot in the car number three. Chuck Bound finishing in fourth, all unofficially, of course. And Chuck Bound and Kyle Petty had a great battle with a few laps to go, Ned. Well, they did, but they got together, and Kyle Petty went around. And uh, so Kyle winds up uh, at the end of the field, those on the lead lap. I think there were 14 cars, 13 cars on the lead lap. Let's take a look again at what happened up there with those two laps to go, Ned. Okay, Kyle running in third place. Chuck Bowen gets into him a little bit as they come off a of turn four, and Kyle spins down to the inside as Earnhardt stays on it right behind the car number 63 off Chuck Bowen, and then when they come back to the start-finish line, as we see Kyle continue to spin there, well, then uh, Earnhardt is able to pull around and take over the third position. That spin will actually end up costing Kyle 10 positions. He had was running in third spot, and now will be shown finishing unofficially in the 13th position. A very happy Steve Grissom will be set to talk to our Benny Parsons when we come back after this. Introducing Olympic Water Guard for wood, the one water sealant that goes beyond water repellency to resist sun damage, fight mildew, and strengthen wood. It's no wonder, it's no wonder, we'll stop the rain. Olympic stops the rain.
me. Are those Bugle Boy jeans that you're wearing? Why, yes. They are Bugle Boy jeans. Thank you. What makes a Quaker State engine so tough? One tough motor oil. And being tough takes more than just talking tough. There's a brand that says it's been engineered for smaller engines, while Quaker State has been tested tough for small engines. In Japan, in Europe, and in America. In fact, Quaker State has toughed out the most demanding specs for every size engine in every size car sold in the U.S. What makes any size Quaker State engine so tough? Quality engineered Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. You may not have thought about getting a Sears diehard battery until you've had a little time alone to think about it. Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, the ninth annual Kroger NASCAR 200 is history, and Steve Grissom has won it. Let's go down trackside for our Sears Road Handler Winter Circle interview and Benny Parsons. Benny? You can tell we're in Indianapolis. Look at the wreath of flowers around our winner, Steve Grissom. Steve? You won one last week, now tonight. What are you going to do, win the rest of them? <laughs> I don't know. We're sure having fun trying, though, Benny. But, uh, you know, I tell you, I just can't say enough for this crew. These guys, they worked super hard, adjusted the car today. We went out and practiced and had uh, run about 30 laps today without stopping. And, boy, I tell you, the car was super all day. And uh, when that green flag dropped, we just kept on uh, trying to run the pace that we uh, talked about before the race and uh, got out of traffic there and... Uh, called an early caution, come in, took on tires and gas, and uh, track position was definitely important here tonight, and uh, I tell you, uh, my, my hat's off to Steve Bird. He made the call, come in pit early, and uh, I tell you, that's what won the race for us. Weren't you a little bit concerned out there, staying on, staying out, staying out, and all those guys behind you stopping, making pit stops and getting new tires? I'm not going to lie. That thought ran across my mind, but, uh, you know, I tell you, uh, our car, it seemed to run uh, better after, uh, after the green flag, after about five green laps, it uh, just kind of took a little while to hook up. But, uh, you know, I tell you, when it hooked up, it was super. Folks, check the paper. This guy might win all the rest of them. Jerry? He might do it, Benny Parsons. He's won two in a row as his capacity crowd files in to see some of their favorite drivers and crews. They're getting ready to, to depart here. Let's take a look at the top 20, how they finish. Steve Grissom, of course, the winner. A gallant effort by Ernie Irvin. Dale Earnhardt coming back with an outstanding run in third. Chuck Bown in fourth and Robert Presley in fifth. As we look at the rest of the top 20, Ned Jarrett, those last few laps, some of the best short track racing I've seen in a long time. I'll tell you, all 200 laps was very good, Jerry. We expected a good show here tonight, and we certainly got one. 15 drivers finishing in the lead lap here tonight. Of course, Kyle Petty back in 13th there after that spin was just two laps to go while battling with Chuck Bound. He was running in third spot and now 16 through 20. Davey Johnson and Davey Allison. Davey Johnson, who had trouble late in the race, but an impressive qualifying effort having started on the front row here tonight. For the ninth time, the NASCAR Kroger 200 here at Indianapolis Raceway Park played before a capacity crowd, and this fan stood for most of the evening because they were absolutely in awe of the kind of competition here that NASCAR put on. Tonight's Kroger NASCAR 200 Speed World coverage brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Aids for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Bugle Boy. In jeans and casual fashions, Bugle Boy is leading the charge. And by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. One outstanding effort for Steve Grissom, a 27-year-old driver from Gaston, Alabama. Again, for Benny Parsons in the pits and Ned Jarrett in the booth, I'm Jerry Punt saying so long from Indianapolis Raceway Park. And again, congratulations to that man, Steve Grissom, our winner.